it's an extreme honor and a privilege to be in this room, to be before you guys. You know, this place is very special to me. You know, I take it, I take it personal, right? When I watch a Tennessee game, right? I take it personal. So when I see this game and I look at it from the perspective that I view it through, right? The thing that hurt me the most when I got injured, it wasn't that my career ended. It wasn't that, right? It's when I went to watch a game or watch a practice and you would see a cat that took it for granted, right? I'm from the school of thought. When a cat is a part of something, organization, team, brotherhood, and you look a man in his eyes and tell him you're going to give him everything he got, and then the situation or the circumstances change, and then you allow your actions to betray your words, I can't understand or comprehend that. That's hard for me. Question becomes this. Can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? In other words, if you don't get what you thought you was gonna get, will you still be the same individual? Like, I don't care what a cat do when, when everything goes right. When things start going south and a cat jumps on your head and you're like, man, it's not what I thought it was. And it's not even about an opponent. It's not even about opposition. It's about, I've never been to that point before and I don't know how I'm going to respond. They scatter themselves. They're standing in a tunnel in Neyland Stadium, getting ready to play in front of 100,000 fans, and they're questioning their integrity. Like the reason I can live with what happened to me on September 9, 2006, the last play is personal to me. When I went out, my last play, I knew I gave my teammates everything I had, every ounce of my spirit, right? That's why when coach came to see me in the hospital, I'm like, I'm good. I empty everything out of me. Now, if I didn't give them everything I had, it would have been a big ounce of regret because I would have lived my whole life with the thought of, man, what if I gave everything I had to it? You meet most young cats and they think it's a dual mentality, right? They think football is one mentality, life is one mentality. No, bro, it's you. It's your spirit. It's your essence. When you get here, you're a part of something that's a lot bigger than you. It's cats that came through here before you, and it's gonna be cats that come through here after you. And so while you're blessed to be able to do it, how about we do it in a way that it's never been done before, and we raise the standard of it, right? The standard is the standard. We don't lower it, right? We don't say, oh man, we Tennessee, but the standard is the standard. We compete, we fight, we scrap, we live to fight another day. We don't retreat against nobody. And every time you get ready to stop, every time you get ready to quit, that's you as a man. That's not you as a football player. But when you press forward, in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the adversity, think about it in terms of this. You're not just building a mentality for the game of football. You're building a mentality that's gonna sustain you 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. I'm telling you that so you can understand what you're a part of and what you represent and what you're playing for. It's a blessing to play the game of football. It's a privilege to play it at the University of Tennessee. I'm gonna say it again, because I don't want you to ever forget it. It's a blessing to play the game of football. It's a privilege to play it at the University of Tennessee. Let's never take this thing for granted, fellas. We gonna scrap, we gonna fight, and we gonna live to fight another day. Thank you for your time. God bless you, man. Pleasure.